Should we sing the song? I was going to say, I don't change. <laughs> and the weather is fine. Hey, welcome to uh, Forecasting with Friends. Me, John Dawson John over Dawson. here, yep. the chief meteorologist, Mike well, you know. <laughs> um, it is, uh, it's Monday. It's, and you were just saying, pointing yep. it out. It's like, it sounds like, it feels like it was oh, a month ago. Oh gosh, yes. One week anniversary. Yeah, like at this time, a week ago, mm -hmm. Uh, we were we were still dealing with uh, mm. moving right across, you know, still major impacts happening. Yeah, I'm trying to even remember the shift because I, I had to, I had the pre landfall yes, shift you did. Yes, and you the did. post landfall shift. Mm -hmm. You had the landfall shift. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, by about 11 o'clock on Monday, I was starting to you were about ready to be done and I was thinking about coming back on again. <laughs> Uh, it was I, uh, noon or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it was, a, I, I think, a really odd day for everybody. I mean, obviously, you know, everybody watching us right now is a pretty odd day, but uh, us here at work, too, because, you know, we kind of have to do, uh, there's certain jobs, right, where when the weather gets really bad, you've got to leave the family and go. Yeah. Obviously, firefighters and EMTs sure. and all this stuff, you know, to a lesser extent here in, in news, too. It's not like we could just take the day off. Right. You know, so we got to leave the family at home. We got to get here. So you're kind of doing double duty. Uh, at the 4 a.m. hour, maybe some of you were watching on Monday, you were sleeping, I think, hopefully. I, I, I was at, at 4 a.m. I yeah, was. I, I do think. remember that. So th during that hour, the um, power started to go out, and uh, w there was a tornado warning for my neighborhood. Yeah, the power wasn't out here. It was your, we're talking about your house. Yes. Yeah. So there was a tornado warning for, uh, for actually the power wasn't out at the home yet, but the tornado warning came out. So I said, oh gosh, so I got, I, and we're, we're covering the storm, Allison and I. So I've, I uh, FaceTimed the family. And so my, my teenagers picked up, my wife didn't, but my teenagers picked up. Now they had stayed up late to try to get their AP test scores. <laughs> Because the test scores were going to be released like at wow. 3 a.m. or okay. what, whatever yeah, it yeah. was. So they were like kind of pulling an all-nighter. So I told them, I'm like, girls, there's a tornado warning. So let's, you know, try to take it seriously. Get to the, you know, get to the middle of the house or whatever. Away maybe. from the windows. Yeah. yeah, away from the windows. Maybe go downstairs with, with uh, mother or whatever. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's stressful for everybody. It's like you're here, the family, you're worried about the family and all that. So. Uh, but everybody, you know, we made it. Yeah, we, we had um, really no damage to our house. We, we lost some fence, the power. We had lost power and all that, you know, kind of stuff. I think, mm -hmm. again, I think it's kind of average is what a lot of people dealt with yeah, uh, yeah. overall. I know there was a lot of people with a lot worse, but I, I also know there were people that, that had the power out was their biggest yeah. issue. And, I'm, and again, that is that is a issue. I that's, don't want to dis, discard that at all. It's almost but, the uh, issue. Yeah, yeah. like if. If you subtract the power outages, like if, if everybody got their power back, let's say in yeah. a day or something, I don't think people would feel like this was as sure. crazy of a storm. Right. Yes, we did have some unfortunate incidents, but in general, it's the electricity was sort of like the, the legacy. And, and I think that's what led to the majority of the gas issues as well, you know, mm -hmm. because there were such limited stations that could pump gas and um, everybody needed generator gas as well as gas for their cars. And, yeah. and you know, you made a, a, a fantastic graphic over the weekend. And just the fact that it, 2024 yeah. has not it been, has been. A, a great year uh, it has been a year yeah. yeah so uh on links one right now we have a, a graphic here that sort of summarizes the uh the craziness that we've had so far this year and some of this i had to refresh my memory of like when, when it happened you know, right I had to go totally. back on the weather service website and look so back in january we actually did have a major freeze we got down to 18 degrees at uh, intercontinental airport one night there was another night we got down to 20. so it was a pretty prolonged freeze uh, and then we had the uh, extreme rain that started on April the 28th and continued through early May for Huntsville and Livingston and all of those spots up to two feet of rain. You know, my mom is up in Huntsville, so yeah. I definitely remember and kind of connected where she was safe. But like a lot of her friends and mm -hmm. things like that with with, you know, water that she's uh, got a lot of folks that she knows that's near the Trinity River yeah. or either Lake Livingston. Yeah. And uh, yeah, totally people have water in their homes. Yeah, just crazy. And then there were a lot more like little individual downpours that happened in the weeks after that too. And then we had this, uh, you know, crazy straight line wind event, the, the derecho um, on May the 16th with the 100 mile per hour estimated winds downtown. And then of course, one week ago, we had Hurricane Barrel and the year's only half over. <laughs> I'm just getting oh going, right? Gosh, no, hopefully this doesn't get any worse. So, um, Centerpoint Energy, the CEO, the much uh, 
Well, let's just, you know, people are saying a lot of things about them. They're up, yeah, there's definitely some people upset with uh, <laughs> Centerpoint Energy, period. So as of this morning, 264,786 customers are still without power. But uh, hey, that means that the almost 2 million have been restored. That's a big number. So that's a big number. So, you know, we're kind of moving in the right direction, but unfortunately it just wasn't happening fast enough. 14,000 crew members were out there. They're working 16 hour shifts with, if, if you ask me, sounds dangerous. <laughs> yeah. You're dealing with electricity and you're up on a bucket, you know, whatever truck and you're working 16 hours. So I'm not sure that I, how I feel about that, but I'm glad that everybody's electricity is getting back online. Uh, yeah, let me tell you just one of what I, I'm just, let me just back up in my neighborhood, you know, we kind of got our power back on mm -hmm. and, and so uh, we got half of the neighborhood came on first and then the other half kind of yeah. came on a day later. And, but on my street there, you know, it, it's kind of like a, a loop around or whatever. So there bottom line, there are four houses on my street that don't have power. That's crazy. And I'm just, oh, I feel so bad for them because like we, we all got the power back yeah. and we're all yay. Yeah. And then they're across the street just kind of looking. <laughs> and happen? it's awful. I know. And it's been, they still don't have power this yeah. morning. And so it's been so long for that. And I, I think that's probably in a bigger picture, sort of the, what a lot, what we're at now mm -hmm. where, you know, major things have been plugged oh, it's back be like in little pockets yeah right? and i yeah. bet there's i bet there's just all these little pockets maybe not just four houses maybe it's a hundred houses or, or something like that or 20 houses or whatever but it's just oh i feel so bad uh for that I, for that kind of setup where you have those pockets like and that. how do you even get a, a, a work crew out there because it's probably just some little local you know thing that right. they need to fix i okay. think you know they're they're all right next to each other the houses obviously so something there's a, there's a problem with whatever yeah. the i don't know how the electrical thing works i mean either uh but i I did. I will say there were some trucks driving in when I was pulling out this oh, morning. Oh well, that's that a good looked sign. like they could fix some stuff. Okay, that's and a so, good sign. Yeah, I'm hopeful that uh, the folks on my street uh, are able to kind of get it get it back going today. I hope so too. All right. Sure. So next story that's in our teleprompter right now. <laughs> so we're getting a better idea of the damage to the electrical system. So that CEO Jason Wells says, "Quote." Over 2,100 poles were damaged during the storm. 18,600 weakened trees had to be removed from those lines. It impacted 75% of the distribution circuits. And he also says Centerpoint is going to be launching a new outage tracker in August and is planning on what they're calling a listening tour. Well, that is not going to be a, no. a good feedback. They may not want to hear a lot of the, what people have to say. And uh, Governor Abbott is going to be uh, touring a staging area at NRG Stadium to give an update on recovery efforts. On Sunday, he made his first public comments. Remember, he was in South Korea and then in Japan. So he got back here into the state and uh, sent. he sent a letter to the PUC, the Public Utility Commission, and asked them to investigate Centerpoint on its post-storm performance. Early appearances, however, suggest that some power companies are not adequately prepared for a hurricane like Beryl. Centerpoint in particular has repeatedly failed to deliver power to customers for extended periods. He directed Centerpoint to provide an action plan by July 31st on how they're going to address these power issues moving forward. They responded to the governor's comments last night saying they have doubled investments in the electric system over the last five years. They've increased spending on managing vegetation by 32%. Although people online, JD, you know, have also pointed out that they did make $6 billion in profit last year. Yeah, totally. So not, not that I'm on a soapbox or anything, but it's like, you know, you increase the vegetation cutting by 32%. That's great, but, you know, maybe it should have been. I, it's one of the, I have so much mixed emotions on this because there's a part of me that's like, uh, you know, knowing that that uh, when we had Ike hit, we averaged one to three weeks without power. Three weeks. Remember that? I know. I know people had. So, it I mean, weeks. it was three weeks without mm -hmm. power when we had Ike hit and Ike really wasn't didn't hit the same area for one thing, but also it just it wasn't that bit much bigger. Uh, uh, wind wise, it wasn't yeah, that much right. uh, stronger of a threat. It was a huge storm mm -hmm. overall. But um, yeah, and then I'm also just kind of like, uh, 
I'm not a big fan necessarily. I'm not trying to back center point up a whole lot because mm -hmm. uh, I think they certainly drop the ball in some places. But also I kind of want to be like, you know, we're all supposed to be ready to, to, to be supporting ourselves for three days, right? You know, yes. you, you remember how this works. You know, they should have been doing some things, but I'm pretty sure a lot mm -hmm. of the people who are making the most noise, they, they probably should have been doing some more things too. You know, you're I mean? right. As far, like we're, we're that's the idea here for hurricane season. You need to support yourself mm -hmm. for three days. That means you don't go to the gas station. You don't go yeah. to the grocery store. You support yourself. That's that is actually uh, one of my topics in my uh, Mondays with Mike thing. Yeah. Deal that airs at uh, 1230 after the noon show today on this streaming platform that you're watching was uh, the top 10 lessons learned from Hurricane yeah. Barrel. And one of them is about that. Yeah. It's about like, okay, you know, all the advice that we hear JD give and all the stuff about preparations before a storm hits and, you know, the getting cash and getting the medicine and getting the food and, you know, all that's in the gas and all that stuff. It, it really kind of hit home this time. Like, oh, I'm, I really should have done that. Yeah, I know, and I'm glad you talked about that because I want to be clear, I wasn't perfect. I mean, I, I'm not preaching up here uh, saying that I did everything right. I certainly learned some lessons, and the Dawson household mm -hmm. will be doing some things different um, the next time that we've got a storm uh, that's bear, bearing down. Bear, barreling, barreling down, down on us, bearing down on us. That, yeah. but there we go. Uh, well, so, yeah. Uh, so actually, yeah, I mean, a lot of lessons learned. Let's hope we don't have to use them again this season. We have a break time coming up uh, after the break. Uh, JD had a has a look back at a bunch of the uh, you know, kind of extraordinary uh, Some stats. facts and yeah. stats. Yeah, uh, related. And then we'll also uh, talk about how the heat has been affecting folks across much of the country. Fox 26 is. Anonymous. The Fox 26 YouTube page. Like and subscribe today. There it is. Do you know, uh, as hot as it's been around here, it could have been a whole lot worse. I mean, places like uh, Washington, D.C. today, about 100 degrees. Man. Um, up in uh, like Abilene, Texas, Amarillo, about 103, 104. 
Uh, Denver's been near 100 uh, out there around Vegas and Phoenix, like 110, 115. Heat so advisories for everybody. heat advisories everywhere, and we're not under a heat advisory, which is great. But uh, uh, you know, taking a look back at barrel, it's, a, it's such a crazy, unexpectedly, you know, sort of impactful. Uh a cat, a cat five storm is just unusual in itself, right? And no matter when it were to occur, um, but to have a cat four and eventually a cat five this early in the season, it was record breaking. So in the Atlantic, this is the earliest that we've had a cat four hurricane June 30th and mm -hmm. also the same with a cat five. I believe Emily 2005 mm -hmm. was the other cat five that uh, that that held that used to hold. Okay, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, up until until this one. And then again, uh, so unusual to have a system that had prior to August. When we get into August, things are just it's a different sure, time of the year, sure. right? And a lot of different things are happening. So uh, this is the strongest max winds that we've seen of any hurricane in the Atlantic before August, which again is a big a big deal. And then this one takes a little bit of thinking here, but there were four four and a half days of a category three or higher. In other words, a major hurricane strength. And again, that's the most we've ever seen prior to August that we've had a major hurricane oh, okay. for that long. Yeah. It was actually a major hurricane at two different times. That's, oh, uh, yeah, you I know, it, it was uh, it weakened and then it uh, strengthened back up to a major hurricane again. So um, that was that was that the, the stat there that again, before August, we've never had a, a major hurricane hang around. Uh, that long overall. So we, we ended up with um, three landfalls. Uh, Grenada was the first one. That was when it was the strongest, that category four uh, max winds at 150. That's right before it built up to the strength of a cat five. It did right after that landfall. It was able to build back up again. And then um, uh, Yucatan Peninsula there in Mexico, uh, that was a category two with max winds at 110. And then of course, Matagorda, We've got those winds at 80 miles an hour. And here's the thing that's, that really surprised me about that landfall was how long it maintained that hurricane strength. And we're going to see what that. We kept, that's yeah. what we kept waiting for it to just yeah. come on, weaken, and it just didn't. And we'll see that here when we look at the history on the map. Again, it started out June 26th is when it became uh, a tropical, or June 29th, I believe, is when it became a tropical system. Uh, zipping through the Caribbean, uh, making those landfalls. I thought I had some pause points in here, but I guess we, I guess Still, we, though. Guess we don't have the pause points but uh, yeah notice the yellow shading there that is the hurricane strength when it's yellow so look how far inland mm -hmm. all the way to i-10 is kind of the is what i'm saying yeah, it probably yeah. even went a little even further than i-10 but that's such the i-10 corridor we yeah. use that for everything right 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 uh, that's how far it, it maintained uh that hurricane strength uh, even more and then after that, we didn't get a chance to focus on this very much, Mike, because we, of course, went into serious recovery mode. Mm -hmm. But the remnants of barrel continued to create all sorts of problems mm -hmm. as it moved across. And specifically, uh, it was one of uh, the most highest uh, tornado spawned yeah. uh, events that we've seen in a tropical system like that. I've got down 50. I think I've seen two numbers, 57, 58, mm -hmm. but basically confirmed Tornadoes. There were like over a hundred warnings. Warnings, yeah. But like a 57, 58 confirmed tornadoes. Uh, the record goes back to Rita in 2005. That was 97. So it's not setting a record necessarily, but that's like 19 years ago mm -hmm. that we haven't seen a tornado. I mean, I haven't seen a hurricane like that that created that many tornadoes. And here in Texas only, they've already put the you know the the damage already over 2.5 billion. Probably going to yeah. end up being more like three, I'm you know, sure. three or 3.5 when it's all over. But statistics are already there talking about the wind damage yep. only that was wind yep. barrel. Uh, okay, so we have a story that I want to share with you. We're probably going to end up running out of time here because I think we got talky, but yeah. I haven't seen this story, but I understand it ran over the weekend. It's from Caroline Collins. She spoke with folks around the newsroom of what they experienced from the storm. Let's take a look. It's been a few days since Hurricane Barrel ripped through the Houston area. Well, here at Fox 26, we have some experienced veterans who have been through multiple hurricanes and others like myself who have just moved here in the last year and a half and went through our first hurricane. So let's go find out what our experienced veterans have learned and our newbies have learned through weathering Hurricane Barrel.
our 5 p.m. producer Randy has been through several storms in Houston, but what did you learn this time going through Barrel? This time I tried to be smart about it because I knew I had to be at work early Monday morning when the storm would be hitting. So I spent the night, Sunday night, at the station just to make sure I wouldn't have to drive through it. So that was the good thing. And I also, this time I got lucky and I had power. I didn't, I, when I went home Monday night, I still had power. So it was great. All right. All right, Marlon, on the assignment desk, what did you learn this time going through Hurricane Barrel? Trim your trees. <laughs> That's the one thing. Uh, we have two trees at our house, and two of the branches fell, one from each tree, and caused a little damage. I mean, it's not bad. Our neighbors had a tree fall on their house, so we're okay. And then be prepared with a lot of gas, because generators don't run cheap. Well, I'm glad you're safe. Producer Matt Horn, what did you learn after going through Hurricane Barrel? Uh, that dogs do not like going outside when it's raining. Do you have a dog, and did it struggle going outside? I have two, and I just waited until it went through. Were they okay? Oh yeah, they were fine. They were sleeping the entire time. Any tips for dog owners or pet owners when it comes to these hurricanes? Uh, be prepared, make sure there's enough food, enough water, and have a backup plan. Thank you. Our political reporter, Greg Grugan, he's an experienced Houston veteran. Hello. Greg, someone mentioned something about dogs? All right, I, I wasn't talking about this uh, until after, and I've been talking to some of the folks in the newsroom, but. Uh, after my first live shot in the wind. And you can see how that, that shed is about to buckle. And about 75, 80 great. miles an hour, we pulled out of there and we're trying to get to 288, uh, which was underwater. Uh, and Carolina had to go to the restroom. Pulled over, saw an old, it was an, well, I thought it was an abandoned barbecue trailer. Went over there, kind of saddled up beside it and was taking care of business. Um, I said, ah, oh. and out of nowhere, a hundred pounds of fury barking and coming straight at me with fangs flying. I took one step back, fell on my back, and then I heard the chain snap. And a hundred pound pit bull couldn't get to me three feet away. I pulled myself up and ran to the truck. And, uh, you know, I've been counting my lucky stars ever since. I didn't know that, Greg. I'm so, I'm so glad that you're okay. Me too. I mean, you know, and it happened in a flash. Somebody had chained that animal inside the barbecue trailer as security. Uh, I, I thought it was kind of abusive to leave him out there in the middle of a storm. I had no idea. Uh, it was a surreal moment. Uh, and I'm pretty fortunate. He would have had the advantage. Uh, man on pit bull, pit bull usually wins. And so I'm feeling pretty grateful. We are just so happy that our Fox family is okay. We know still so many people are struggling without power. But I hope you enjoyed the stories from our Fox 26 family. I'm Caroline Collins, Fox 26. Fox 26 is.
The Fox 26 YouTube page. Like and subscribe today. The, I can't get over the Greg Grugan story. Uh, yeah, it's classic, right? <laughs> that, well, first there, of all, it's so Greg. It just, if it's going to happen to somebody. Oh my gosh. So, the, <laughs> is it fangs flying? Fang, Fangs, fangs flying, flying. As, as, as this pit bull is coming at him. The chain grabbing just in time to save him. He did not specify, you know, where the pit bull was jumping. Yeah, toward. or any of that you know kind I mean? of stuff. Yeah, I, I noticed that this, there, was a, there were a few details missing. A few details missing from that. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, there are a lot of hazards when these reporters are working out in the field. Some of them you may not even ever have thought of. <laughs> nope, I, I wouldn't have thought about the... <laughs> The guard dog the that you guard dog entered the, their territory. When nature calls and there's yeah. a giant guard dog there. Seven day forecast. So right now, going to be a hot one. Um, kind of looks like it's going to be a rainy one before very long. Yeah, I was looking at that weekend forecast. Uh, finally tweaking that out. I had to kind of kind of wallpaper a little bit over the weekend, some of those numbers, but it does look like Friday is going to be uh, a bit more uh, action across the area, but certainly extended into the weekend. And um, it's nice to see the temperatures go down, but temperature go down. Yeah, but yeah, that, that rain is really going to I'm, I'm not sure we're all ready for for that much rain. I know it's going to be a bit of a shock to the system. Well, hey, this was fun. We have four seconds left. We'll see you next time.